Hello, and welcome to this week's live timeline session. This one is exciting as always <laughs> because it's been a few weeks uh, I, we had a little summer break there um kind of by accident i just happened to be very busy on a few mondays in a row uh but i think it worked out it was a nice little break uh, i also actually need to go back and do one thing that i missed uh if you noticed uh not the last session but the the one before uh, on number 18 we actually only made it through half of the sort of material for that session which is totally fine when when you're going through these sessions uh it's okay to take more than one session per little blue box in the timelines in fact it's actually encouraged to really take time to really go deep because remember the better you do the simple stuff the deeper you go with these simple exercises the better off you'll be so i'm going back and picking up the little pinky practice from the left hand and pinky practice uh session uh so that we can get the pinky practice part of it that we didn't get to before I should also mention if you're new to this series and you don't know what's going on, uh, I'm going through the sort of intermediate level, the mastery timeline from the next generation clarinet method, which is all about uh, getting the fundamentals down, mastering the fundamentals, which is why it's called the mastery timeline. Uh, if you don't have the next generation clarinet method, then you can learn more about that at the link in the description. And you can also get some sample pages at the link in the description as well. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's a method book and program that I wrote, but it's really great because it has the whole method book, but it also has these timelines that tell you how to go through it, how to implement it, how to get the most out of it, which is a lot of fun. And I've been enjoying going through it and I feel like I'm getting some good fundamental practice in, which is always a good thing. So without further ado, let's get started. And we start with our three-step warm-up uh, with our good old Christmas tree long tones. I'm going to do these starting on E, which is sort of my favorite note to start on. It's really good for crossing the breaking and gets you all that uh, action around there that you need. I'm also testing out uh, the vocalese mouthpieces that I'm trying out and we'll probably do a review of um, soon. Uh, and I'm checking it with the tuner because it's always good to do long tones with the tuner. Um, I don't do them with the tuner every single time, um, but it's good to check in with the tuner every now and then.
Now the opposite of a benefit, <laughs> the issue with practicing with the tuner is sometimes you're so focused on the pitch that you don't have enough time to think about the sound quality, which is why I recommend using the tuner kind of occasionally. Uh, it's, it's really important to be able to play in tune, but it's also really important to sound good. So you need to be making sure that you're taking time to do both of those, uh, which is again, a way to go deeper and the simple stuff and get the simple stuff going better. That was pretty good. And now we're on to technique, doing the ascending scales. If I remember correctly, I did it in G flat uh, last time. Um, so I'll keep working around the circle of fourths, which means I'm on to B major this time. And this one, uh, always with a metronome. Uh, nice and comfortable speed though. <laughs> practice getting used to the left pinky D sharp, which I have done not nearly as often on uh, this scale as I have without it, because uh, it's a little bit new to me, so it was good practice to get that in there. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go down now. try all the way up and down uh, once more on this one just to get it all smooth. I, th I feel pretty comfortable with the notes but again like some of those left pinky D sharps and, and stuff like that need a little work. <laughs> And now let me go on to the, the minor. Uh, I think of it as A flat minor or G sharp minor. And I'm gonna start with the harmonic minor. Um, so again, to sort of get myself in the zone, I'm gonna actually think about what that is instead of just throwing the clarinet at it first, uh, thinking about what that harmonic minor in particular is, because I haven't practiced that one nearly as much as the melodic minor. So it's the technically F flat to G natural, okay. together and smooth it out now. I'm gonna do it one more time from the start. So I'll just 
just a little bit of like finger lip in there that I want to iron out. Again, really get the simple stuff, really picky and really clear and clean. harmonic minor. Now let me go on to the melodic minor. And this one I don't have to think through as much because I've practiced the melodic minor a lot more than the harmonic minor throughout my life, but I'm still going to take a moment to think about where I'm going. <laughs> repetitions on the left pinky D sharp that's not so familiar or E flat I guess depending on how you're thinking of the scale um, and feel free to ask any clarinet questions that you have as we're going but uh, let me go ahead and go down the melodic minor now thing smoothing it out with the last 20 seconds I have here. the technique. Um, this is a really good one. Uh, again, I don't practice in these keys all that often, uh, but it's really good to be practicing them regularly, which is one of the great things about going through these timelines is it's really forcing me to do some stuff that I don't actually do regularly, but is really good for me. Uh, so now I'm going to go on to the articulation. Let me just double check. It's the scale. Yeah, the scale articulation. Great. Uh, let me get my metronome going on this as well. And let's give it a shot. Um, I am going to work on my articulation speed uh, focused today because I've noticed some stuff that I've been playing recently that has some very fast articulation and my tongue's been just a little sluggish. So I want to sort of work that up a little bit. I might do a couple little quick adaptations on this uh, articulation exercise, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm starting at uh, 120 and I'm going to be tonguing 16th notes. I go faster with the articulation, I have to be lighter, more relaxed, let the air keep the sound going. try going a little bit faster and see how that goes. I'm going to bump it up to 132, which is the goal articulation that I'm working on in a particular piece. It's not nearly this many notes in a row, which makes it a little bit easier. Uh, but if I can do this many notes in a row at this tempo, then I'll be in good shape. <laughs>
yeah, that's fast <laughs> and a little bit uncomfortable. Um, but it's almost easier than 120 because at that speed it turns into really just wiggling my tongue about as fast as I can uh, and just sort of letting it flap in the wind. Uh, so it takes actually a little bit less control. You can hear that it's not great quality. So what I'm gonna do is do a couple just like bursts, short bursts of articulation. This is actually an exercise in the next generation clarinet method, which I'm not sure if we'll get to in this timeline. I don't think we do. Um, but it's the burst articulation. Actually, maybe we did do it. Um, now I have to check because I'm curious. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to explicitly do it um, in this timeline. So you might have to go on to another timeline to get to the bursts. But this is a really great exercise I'll sort of show you. It's just short bursts of a few beats of 16th notes. <laughs> So you can see the the effect there. Um, now that I did that, that was actually feeling very good. Now I want to see if I can keep that same kind of quality to the articulation and keep the speed up on the scale articulation. <laughs> So I'm going to do some burst articulation on the high notes. It's a little bit tricky on the lower notes as well, so that might be something that uh, I could make a note of in the reflection area to do uh, the burst articulation on the lower notes as well. But for now I'm out of time, uh, which means we're on to the actual meat of the session, which is page 39 through 41, the left hand and the pinky practice. Um, in the mastery number 18, session 18, um, I did the left hand part of this. So now I'm going back to get the pinky stuff, but I'm going to swap my clarinet out real quick. If I can get this mouthpiece off, I got it. <laughs> uh, but let me read the purpose to it as a refresher because the purpose applies to both the left hand and the pinky stuff that we're going to do today. So that what I wrote is, <clears throat> these exercises are like the finger flexibility exercises from the beginning of book, beginning of the book, but for the weakest fingers. As you do these, focus on keeping your finger motion as relaxed and minimal as possible. On the left hand exercises, you'll probably want to move your wrist and fingers too much. And on the pinky practice, you will need to focus on the pinkies being independent and not getting the other fingers involved. Great. I think I'm going to have to just re-put my read on because this got moved around a little bit as I was taking it off to swab. Uh, but let me go ahead and pull up page 39 through 41, and I think it's gonna be more like page 40 because we already did this stuff on 39. Yes. So 39 and 40 are the uh, left hand stuff, which I might do more of today if there's time because it's always good stuff to look at. But I'm gonna start with the pinky practice on page 41. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't anticipate how tricky this would be to get lined up since the mouthpiece is so tight, but this 
is good. Uh, so the pinky practice is all about that minimal pinky motion. So I'm gonna go ahead and stand up so you can see. Pay really close attention to what my not pinkies are doing. Um, and that's something to pay attention to as you're doing these kinds of exercises as well. Make sure that not everything is moving around, uh, especially if the wrist is moving around. That's really common. You can see how much that causes the other fingers to move. Um, so it's really about getting the pinkies to move independently. Uh, and this one we can also do with the metronome. I'm gonna keep it at 100 uh, like we we're doing for the technique. And let's give this a try. <laughs> similar pattern. Um, with the left pinky, if you don't have a left G sharp key, then the notes are a little bit different and that's how I wrote it in the book. But because I do have a left G sharp key, I'm also going to work on getting around to that one too. <laughs> You can also check in with your other hand. So like when I'm doing the right pinky stuff, make sure that the left hand's not moving around, make sure it's not squeezing too tight. When I'm doing the left pinkies, make sure the same thing with the right hand. Um, so that was good, so that's that one. And it's basically the same pattern, but we're gonna go up to one note higher each time. Uh, so that you get more fingers involved. Uh, it's pretty easy to keep the ring finger stationary and move the pinky when the ring finger is not lifting up, but how precisely can you land in the same spot and again keep that independent motion when you're actually moving the ring finger as well. So that's the trick with this one. <laughs> a few more times um, thinking about sound quality a little bit as well because that's always important um, but even more important than that on this particular exercise is thinking about the precision of the uh, rhythm because I'm a little bit not quite always with the metronome uh, and it's really important that the metronome and the music is in charge of when my fingers move not my fingers feeling like moving whenever they want <laughs> feels pretty good. Let's do the left pinky version now. I'm going to try to make this extra challenging. I'm going to leave my right pinky touching this key, not pressing the key, but just touching the key so that I can really work on independently moving that ring finger and moving it perfectly in time with my left pinky. Oh, I'm holding that down. <laughs> Um, so I'm not actually touching this key because it's a little bit too weird with it actually moving all the time. Um, but I am, am trying to keep that pinky very isolated, which is going well. But in all of this effort, thinking about holding steady, I'm noticing some tension in my left hand where I'm like starting to squeeze to try to hold steady. Uh, so I'm going to do it a few more times and try to release that. <laughs> And 
every now and then you can hear a little bit of where it's bad coordination, so I'm trying to eliminate all of that as well, of course. That's pretty good. Uh, and I'm gonna go on. It's it's pretty similar. We just are going up one more note at a time uh, just to practice all of those tricky coordinations. <laughs> Turn up the metronome just a little bit so I can hear it. Hopefully that's not too loud for you. It's like starting to swing just a little bit, so I'm going to try not to do that. Again, just really perfectly rhythmically precise. Yeah, this is really a workout and it's feeling good now to be natural, which is also tricky because it's the middle finger uh, that's staying stationary and then you have this awkward split in your right hand. <laughs> Checking the how much these fingers are moving, which they aren't moving a lot, but you can see my finger nail was a little white, and you can see my hands are a little uh, tight there. Uh, you can really see the rings on there, um, which isn't bad. It's like good that I'm getting a good feel, um, but maybe I'm squeezing a little bit harder than I need to. So I'm going to try to relax that out a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. 
C, because that gets all the right hand fingers involved. Oops. exercise. Um, it's interesting as I am doing so many repetitions, it's like if you've ever said the same word over and over and over and it starts to not sound like a word anymore, I can't even like tell if I'm playing eighth notes anymore because <laughs> I've played it so many times. Um, and I actually just have 30 seconds left in this session, so I think that's a good stopping point. Um, but this is a really good exercise. I want to warn you that it's, of course, very possible to get very little out of this exercise, even if you're doing a lot of repetitions, if you aren't thinking about the quality. That's part of why I wanted to do these as a, a playthrough um, and, and share how I work on them with you so I can hopefully share my thought process a little bit and the thought process that you should have or similar thought process you should have. You don't have to think exactly like me, but we want to be really making sure that you're going for the quality of the simple stuff. Um, if you're going through these exercises and just sort of like... And you're not paying attention to how your fingers are moving, you're not playing in time, you're not doing it with a metronome, you're going so fast that you, you don't have time to think about the quality of things. If your, your wrists are moving, um, especially as you're doing maybe the left ones, like you can see how much my wrist and fingers are moving, um, then you're not going to get much out of these exercises. So I always recommend going quite slow, um, slower than you think you need to so that it's really, really comfortable and that you can really think about where am I actually moving? How does it feel to move this way? Does it feel totally relaxed and comfortable and natural? And is the coordination perfectly in time and very precise? Because the more relaxed you can be, the more precise you can be, the faster you're going to be able to go. And that's part of what these exercises are about, is getting those pinkies figured out, getting the left hand stuff figured out, um, getting all of the fingers in a good position and really confident going where they need to go. So hopefully you found that helpful. Um, for my little bit of reflection today, um, I'm going to write basically what I just said, uh, just that really paying attention to the quality is so important and, and so helpful on these. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining for this live timeline session. Uh, I think my next few Mondays are a little bit more normal, uh, so we should, should be back to regular sessions. I'm very excited for next week because we're sort of moving away from the fundamentals section of the book. That's all the warm-up exercises. And we're going to start getting into some of the short music studies um, that are a little bit more musical. Uh, we're going to have some new warm-ups to be doing. Uh, so I think that'll be a great process and continuation of the journey. So thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next live timeline session. Thank <laughs> you.